Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode seven of this mind-blowing, revolutionary episode of Two Gays, One Episode. I'm Alex. And I am Go Jesus. And today, what are we going to do, Michael? We're going to be talking about episode 19, A Man's Battle, or Introjection, which is also one of my favorite episodes of the show. <laughs> this is like yeah. in the top three. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's, it's, I think it's the best episode of the show. Um, yeah, like, maybe, you know, there's a difference between fra- favorite and best, but yeah, this there, there is definitely is, and the it's, best. <laughs> so. I think it's the best. I think it's just the best. I have other ones that are probably my favorite, but this one I think is just so perfect in every way. It does everything it needs to do. It covers so – it's perfectly paced, too, is the thing. It, it's There's so much packed into this episode, but it's perfectly paced. It doesn't feel too fast. It doesn't feel too slow. It just feels like every scene services the plot. It's It's incredible, I think. Yeah, so we start off with the hospital and then we move our way to like Shinji leaving Gendo and stuff like that and being like, I'm bouncing, I'm out. And Asuka fights and fails and there's just, yeah, the episode's so dense. There's a lot happening in this one. Yeah. Yeah, and everyone gets their, every character really gets a moment, (laughs) interestingly. Mm -hmm. Um, So I watched this five times (laughs) on the weekend. (laughs) Because you wanted to or in preparation? In preparation. Both? No, I just watch it five times every week. It's just what I do. I like it that much. Yeah. I watched it in English. I watched the new... So I first I watched the new ADV dub, or the old ADV dub, sorry. Then I watched... The, or no, I watched the Japanese, then the ADV dub. Then I watched it in French. I'm sorry, not five times, four times. And then I watched the new Netflix dub. And uh, it... Yeah, it's interesting. I might talk about some of the, the, the dub a little bit. Um they're all good is the thing all four were really solid uh and the, the japanese i think is really incredible uh, i'll talk about that a bit at the end i think though so uh let's let's kind of get into the recap here so the episode begins with uh a follow up to what happened in the last episode because that obviously is so shocking for shinji that his father has made this choice to kind of double cross him just after the two of them were starting to bond really and he he basically took his agency away from him and forced him to hurt his friend. Yes. Yes. Uh, Toji's in the hospital. He's not Toji's doing so hot. Toji's in the hospital. But before that, Kendo just wants to double down on the worst father of the year, year award. And uh, so Shinji's really upset and he's threatening. I mean, he's being he's being impudent, but he's threatening to like trash headquarters and Gendo, Gendo, after in the last episode, he, tried, he kind of tried to reason with him a little bit. Gendo tried to sort of like talk to him almost like a father and say, you know, you need to do this. You're going to get hurt if you don't fight back. You need to fight back. And then um, Shinji refused. So now now, uh, now Gendo is done with him. He's not even going to try to reason with him. He just says, you know, suffocate him. Turn the LCL up, the density up. So he starts choking and he passes out. And now he's in the hospital because his father put him in the hospital just because... And the, doesn't Does, he have, like, a weird mind connection with Toji while in the hospital, too? Yes, Toji has a dream. So he has a shared dream with Rei and Shinji, and Shinji and Rei are talking. Um, they're just like, wow, Toji, he's such a loser. And then he's, like, <laughs> overhearing everything. <laughs> <laughs> Toji's there listening. Yeah, but, like, every character gets a little moment here. Um, I think Masato has a conversation with Ritsuko, and Ritsuko says, you know, they took Shinji out, they stuffed him in the hospital. So it's setting up all the characters right off the bat that they're all involved. Asuka and Rei are sitting outside Shinji's hospital room. They don't need to be there, but they're there because, you know, they're his friends now, which is really cool. I, lo- I love the subtle development here. Asuka would never bother to go to the hospital before, um, but now she does. Uh, and... The Asuka toll. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. The Oscar doll. <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> Ray, they have a quick exchange where uh, Oscar's being pretty mature. She says, like, you know, he's not going to he's not going to want to be a pilot anymore. And Ray said and Oscar says he's in there dreaming. And then Ray's like, dreaming. What's that? <laughs> and Oscar's like, what? <laughs> Which is kind of a funny little moment. But yeah. Uh, and then then we have the Toji stuff. We get Toji out of the way. This is like a little goodbye to Toji. I think, um, with uh, with him seeing Shinji and Ray talking, and Shinji's basically saying that he has no, he has, he doesn't care about his father anymore. And Ray, who is his father's eternal cheerleader, asks him, "Did you ever try to understand your father?" And Shinji said, "I did. I did try to understand him." Which I'm not sure how I feel about the scene. <laughs> how do you feel about the scene? Basically, pinning it on Shinji that he should try to understand his father, not the other way around. <laughs> 
I think that this isn't even Rei who's talking to him right now. This is more of just the Rei inside of Shinji. Uh, so it's more, it's more of him projecting the expectations of of it, it's it's like a self criticism. I at yeah. least that's how I interpret it. Uh, it makes sense for Shinji and Toji to be kind of linked uh, angelic wise because he's been contaminated clearly and they both have some sort of connection now having been in the Ava units uh yeah. but but yeah I don't think Ray is sleeping in her bedroom like astral projecting to Shinji and scolding <laughs> him uh I think I think it's it's just Shinji blaming himself for not connecting with his father or not attempting to more okay uh and his arc at the end of the day Shinji never really reconciles with his dad uh, because you know, Hideaki Anno never got to reconcile with his father, so it's very autobiographical in that way. Yeah, uh, he just moves I, on from his father. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's it's like you have to move on, you have to let go. That's pretty much what it is at the end of the day. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but I I just meant more. Do you think they're ma- the sh- so you don't think the show is making like an empirical argument that about Shinji here about how he should? Try no, to I Gendo? think it's I think it's more about Shinji blaming himself for not trying to understand Gendo. Um, at least that's how I see it in kind yeah. of the broader scheme of things. It's totally yeah. valid. Yeah. Uh, and I think maybe Shinji's really disappointed. I think he's really upset. Um, he's really upset because he wanted, he was, he was happy. <laughs> like, again, we go back to that scene in the grave. Like, I I think it's interesting that you're terminated so negatively. I'm not, I'm not criticizing you, but just that, because obviously <laughs> after the fact, they've, they portrayed it as if like, oh yeah, that was a great time. <laughs> we went to my mother's grave. He flew away in a helicopter. I can't get over that. I can't get over that. That was like a positive <laughs> thing for Shinji. Soka. That was um, I mean, maybe that's just a cultural thing because, uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't interpret that in a million years as being positive, but I guess to Shinji it is. <laughs> yeah. We got to talk to his dad. I guess, I guess he doesn't talk because he, he never has a conversation with his dad where it's just them together mm-hmm. so yeah i guess it it's, it's about right? their mom too about his mom yeah, he got is... to ask questions about his mom and he and then gendo answered them Pretty and rare. didn't tell him he was useless <laughs> i guess speaking of which <laughs> we cut to... i guess neglect is better than like uh or or being emotionally unavailable is better than abuse <laughs> but it, whatever yeah, like being yeah i mean they got to actually talk they got to stand together and talk i mean i don't i don't even Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I was going to say something really personal. I'm not going to say it. But anyway, um, the uh, so we have another scene where um, Shinji's got like five handcuffs on. <laughs> they really think that Shinji's just going to like bust out of these handcuffs, I guess, and go. <laughs> I actually think that's more of a uh, that's more of a um, a risk factor because he could. He, that's a lot of weight to put on to some hands. You know, he could he could come up to Gendo and just whack him across the face with all five handcuffs. <laughs> That's like that's like fisticuffs right there. <laughs> this is for Toji. <laughs> Just murders Kento with the handcuffs. Soka. <laughs> yeah, that's Kendo's reaction. Just I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've, you've killed me. I see. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, interesting how differently this is played in the four different languages, though. Uh, first off, Shinji in French, I think they cast an actual boy back in 97, or when this, this is there 97, right? This is the premiere of Ava? Oh, uh, the thing Something is like that, that different anyway. language dubs have different years. Um, That's true. Anyway, it, at least 20 years ago, probably. So they cast this little boy 20 years ago. They've never bothered to recast him because they generally don't recast people in in French or in other languages they often will just leave them and say like oh you keep playing you're the iconic actor so I think at this point he's like almost 40 and he's still playing Shinji <laughs> but he he's, it's not like he was chosen because he had a young voice like say Spike Spencer he just he just plays the part and he's really good at it but he just sounds so much older than Shinji should which yeah I recall in the French dub having seen that before Shinji was really impressive in French actually um in the original ADV dub uh, very youthful, yeah. very um, focused, and extremely, um, he just knows how to perform. Like, his cadence is very natural. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a really talented actor, so. Yeah, uh, I don't know his name, but, yeah. 
really good. Pierre. The French dubs in general, and French anime dubs, just to go off on a little bit of a tangent, are always really good, consistently. And that's not to insult American or Japanese or any other language. Yeah. But, but in French, you they're all conservatory actors, so they all have, like, professional training, which doesn't necessarily make you a better actor, but it helps. <laughs> it definitely helps. You're, you're um, more practiced, more, more you know, uh, experienced out of the gate, I'd say. Uh, yeah. That doesn't make you a better actor. It just means that you've had more under your belt before you get mm-hmm. started. But you have yeah. more tools to work with, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I was also going to say the difference. There's a really different the way that all the Shinjis are kind of the same here, how they play it. But all the Gendos are really different. So the way the Japanese does it is, we talked a bit about this in the last episode, is very matter of fact, very underplayed, very serious. But then... Uh, McAvery, the way he plays it, which is the original ADV again, though, he plays, there's a little more judgment in his voice. He's a, he's a, he's a bit more bitter uh, than the other ones are, where they're just sort of matter-of-factly saying, oh, you're leaving? Okay, I guess we're never going to see each other again. But he, he's, uh, McAvery almost seems to break Gendo's character a bit here to say something, which is interesting. I think it's a good choice. Not, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not a bad choice the other way, but it's, I think it's a good choice. What does uh, the Netflix stub do? Um, oh, that's I don't not remember. I think he, he mostly just he imitates the Japanese. I think he gotcha. follows the Japanese. Very understated. Gotcha, um, gotcha. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, Shinji really hates Gendo now. He doesn't want anything to do with him. He's leaving. He'll never pilot a Neva again. Gendo says he's disappointed in him, uh, which is which is a change of pace that he has any feelings at all about Shinji. That he's not just like you. You should do it. If you're not gonna do it, get out. But now he's almost. He says he's disappointed. He says like, and you know, I, I thought you were gonna keep doing this. But Shinji can't do it, so he he leaves. And then we have a scene afterwards where Shinji's just lying in his bedroom. The phone comes up, and Kensuke complains. Uh, he calls to say goodbye, both to the show and to Shinji, because I don't think he ever appears again. And this final line is like, even Toji got to be a pilot, which I assume is like very... <laughs> you can see it's very meta, like, I didn't even get to be a pilot, and I'm out of this stinking show. <laughs> You know, he's got his time in the spotlight in some of the side Ava stuff. Like, I'm pretty sure there's a PS2 game where he was a pilot and he wore this really awful teal suit. But th- that's besides the point, I guess. <laughs> oh, teal. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> it was either teal or yellow. I can't remember. Neither but... of those sound like good, pl- good plug suit colors. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. It's, it's an interesting factoid. Um... It, yeah, but I'm I'm glad I'm glad Kensuke never got in a unit. Let me just put that out there. <laughs> Don't I worry, think. Shinji. I'll handle this situation. <laughs> I'll save uh. you, Akari. <laughs> yeah. I'll save you, Akari. <laughs> and then immediately afterwards, Shinji's trying to call someone, and the phone tells him, for for security reasons, this call has been terminated. Goodbye. And then oh. that's just the end of the scene. Who is he call? Is he trying to call Kensuke, and he can't? Are they trying to show that like? nervous cutting him off from other people i think so i think he was trying to call back and then he got uh basically disconnected intentionally okay. uh because he he has valuable information they don't want him to communicate with other people at this point yeah okay um that makes sense but uh imagine if kensuke did become a pilot and imagine if he became like a rogue rival to shinji where he's he's i'm better than either asuka or you i will prove it i'm gonna be the best in the whole world the greatest naval pilot to ever pilot <laughs> 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 just an insane villain <laughs> he'll become the greatest pilot of all time yeah. <laughs> and uh power gets to his head it just it just overwhelms him and Shinji... they probably didn't choose him because he has he's vision impaired they probably didn't want to... <laughs> i don't know i mean not that people would glad like you can't do it like, if you have glasses you're fine but it's like have you ever seen little miss sunshine yes but i don't remember it was like when it came out <laughs> Uh, there's a guy who wants to pilot a be a pilot, literal pilot for airplanes. Yeah. And oh, it's Paul Dano, right? Yeah, yeah, and he's colorblind, yeah. and he has this revelation, and uh, that he's colorblind, and he he jumps out of the van and runs to, into this field and just like falls into the ground and starts sobbing. And I imagine uh, Misato telling Kensuke <laughs> that he wears glasses so he can't be an Ava pilot. And he just like runs out of a van or whatever and starts crying. <laughs> this is so mean. <laughs> Poor Kensuke, that lovable character Kensuke. How can we treat him so shabbily? 
<laughs> one of the best. One of the best. All the Cascade iconic. fans are writing us hate mail right now. <laughs> I don't know if we can handle... My next YouTube video, Kensuke character analysis. <laughs> <laughs> Kensuke is the key to Evangelion with his face. <laughs> Kensuke, the true star of Evangelion. An underappreciated uh, key po- player in <laughs> all things Evangelion. <laughs> <laughs> The Jar Jar Binks of Ava. We can get him working. It'll all fall in place. <laughs> no! <laughs> He's a funnier character than Ava Gillian's ever had. <laughs> he, he gets to do his little thing in the rebuild. He gets the thing in the rebuild. Yeah, yeah. They actually did incorporate him pretty well in the final He's, movie. Yeah. That was my favorite part of that movie. It was just, like, all the supporting cast coming back and they're in their little, like, mountain community or whatever it's like hey stuff. i'm kensuke basically kaji 2.0 hello <laughs> i I appreciate that well it, it played into his like the only thing that defies him is that he's a survivalist that's the only defining that was introduced in the tv series never in the movies which is really funny <laughs> yeah <laughs> but... oh <laughs> well i mean yeah whoops <laughs> and... <laughs> maybe we whoops. should have had that scene that in 1.0 <laughs> yeah <laughs> They didn't have time for it. They didn't have time for a whole plot where Shinji goes into the woods with Kensuke for like a day and camps overnight. There was no time for that in the first rebuild movie. Um, anyway, balls back to, to the episode walls. 19. Yeah, episode, episode 19. 19. Uh, Masato... Uh, oh no, first story, I wanted to point out that uh, the color palette in the scene... Oh, hey, oh, sorry. So the next scene is the one where Hikari comes to Toji. She comes to see him in the hospital and it's just a nice little scene again we're just saying goodbye she gives to these characters because they never appear again it's cute yeah it's cute yeah she's, hikari she's does like, reappear again but yeah she's the only oh one. that's true you're right sorry but she's not really but yeah but um this is yeah. the last time we really see her have some agency or, or do anything i think she's mostly just uh, uh a reflector uh, a foil for oscar she's for oscar sense, yeah but um yeah so anyway so she comes back she says i can't bring your lunch because of all this, we see that Toji is missing his leg. I was looking for it because we talked about it. And, yep, he's missing one of his legs, which it's odd that they don't draw attention to it. And then the scene ends with him telling Hikari, uh, you know, to tell my sister I'm okay, even though he's clearly not okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Tell my little sister I'm okay. So, nice little bookend there for Toji. Started The show started with him looking out for his sister. It ends with him saying, hey, look after my sister. You'd be surprised at how many Ava fans never noticed Toji was missing a leg. It's... It's kind of crazy. I, I never think. noticed until you mentioned it like last week no. when we were recording. Ninety <laughs> percent of people who watch the show never know that because it really doesn't draw attention to it. It's just there. Um, it's also under a blanket, which is kind of like disheveled. So yeah, unless you're looking for it, you're not really going to see it. I wish uh, there was no blanket, and then it was just this bleeding stump. Uh, <laughs> it would be in bandages. <laughs> Hopefully it's not bleeding. <laughs> There's bad doctors. <laughs> what should we do about this doctor? Eh, just leave it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's only Toji. <laughs> it's only Toji. <laughs> <laughs> He's just some weird survivalist kid with glasses. No, no, that's Kensuke. That's Kensuke? <laughs> Quickly, no, Toji! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought you were Kensuke. <laughs> you could have been a supporting character. You were almost an Ava pilot. So, uh, uh, what do we yeah, get anyways, after that? <laughs> after that. Yeah. After that little scene of Toji bleeding to death, um, Shinji is driven to the train station by Masato, which obviously is a parallel to episode four. Episode four. Yep. Yeah. Which was also written by Satsukawa. Uh, kind of his baby so this is so really Satsuko is bringing back all the themes that he sort of established uh, earlier on in the show uh, I, it's just he's such a good writer because it's really this this is like I've tried to kind of rush through it a little bit because all the, the good stuff's in the second half but this is all like half the episode all of this he's just taking so much time with it he spends so much time establishing all the character beats the mood the timing um, the animation is great in this as well I don't. Rem- I didn't check who directed this. 
I, I watched it four times and didn't check who directed it, so... <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I don't know off the top of my head, so... Uh... I'm not sure. It was, uh, I know some of the animation was done by the, the one really good guy. <laughs> That's all I know. Oh, yeah, yeah, the EOE dude. Yeah, the EOE um... dude. Uh, the... Uh, so he's he's bringing back everything that he sort of established, and the direction is really good. The color palette in this episode is so good. It's just like the water when they're in the hospital, and the way the sort of uh, saturation is done, that sort of white saturation, which they always do in the hospital scenes, it just looks mm-hmm. so good in this episode. Um, everyone's really on model. I didn't notice anything like really like no like weird shaped head yeah this episode has really yeah shinji's on model throughout the whole thing i don't think anyone they really cared about this episode they knew it was penultimate i feel so yeah for sure um yep so anyway next bit masato takes shinji to the train parallel to episode four uh but she's with him this time she is she apologizes to shinji for what happened to toji she's the only person who does that i think out of the whole cast uh, yeah so she's she shows their connection shows that she's keyed into what's bothering shinji and she says she can never make up for it um shinji tells her she's being selfish which is kind of impudent when she's apologizing but anyway he's a little kid he's a 14 year old i guess i uh, think i think it was interesting you know in contrast to episode four right is that shinji was this really meek and shy character in a lot of ways and even him staying at the train station was extremely submissive and here he is so much more just like stern and aggressive and like uh sure of his decision which mm-hmm. is very it's just an interesting change like how shinji has changed and misato has changed so much too where uh she was extremely like distressed that shinji was leaving and and like kind of sad and disappointed by it but now in contrast she's accepting of it she's seen that shinji has actually experienced horrors and and like is just apologetic about it um whereas before yeah. it was like i want you to stay but now there's a very much like a i understand why you're leaving <laughs> yeah element to it um it's it's a shame that the rebuild didn't set it up in 1.0 you know they didn't have a scene with Masato and Shinji at the station because they have this scene in 2.0 and I was just thinking yeah that never really it pays off so well here thinking about just mm-hmm when you have moments like this where there is a scene that directly calls back to a previous scene it really shows and illustrates how far a character has come uh subconsciously Mm -hmm. and consciously uh just um it's easy to compare and when you have those points of reference to compare uh you can really see the character arcs and the escalation of things so Mm -hmm. yeah and we know so much more about both characters now at this point too there's a whole supporting cast of characters that didn't exist back then there was only even ray wasn't really introduced at that point it was just gendo shinji and masato and yeah ray was super in the background she, she wasn't was super in the background yeah. she hadn't, like yeah she hadn't really been introduced yet she was just she was just there um mm-hmm. but now we have all these relationships and now shinji's walking away he's not just walking away from the potential he's walking away from a life at this point all these people who care about him and who he cares about, which is a major theme of this episode. Uh, the main themes of this episode are what motivates Shinji, and uh, and, then, and then another one I'll talk about in a bit. But the ma- the main thing here is what motivates Shinji. Why does he do what he does? And here he's a very motivated character. He was not very motivated in episode four. He was just doing whatever anyone told him to do. He didn't have a strong agency to say what he wanted so he he just he ran away not because he wanted to run away necessarily but because he didn't want to stay he just he just didn't want to do what he was doing but now he's running away because of uh his principles he has principles now yes and that's gonna play into the rest of the episode uh and yeah and then masato has a little speech in the car about how she recognized what you just said basically that shinji is self-assured and that this is the first time he's really spoken with uh, assuredness and that he won't be coming back and she believes him uh and then immediately as if on cue as soon as shinji's about to get on the train an angel attacks <laughs> immediately so shinji's needed immediately they need him <laughs> they need him to come back 
and he doesn't want to come back. So he ha he has a conflict, and this is where that core conflict thing, that want need, comes in, uh, and it's very apparent. Um, yeah. And and like so, even though you have like the broad character arc want need, you have even little individual want needs. Because in this episode, what does Shinji want? He wants he to wants never pilot. To leave. Yeah. He wants to, to leave. He never wants to pilot any of again. And what and what he need? needs is to return and become a pilot and yes. accept his position as a pilot. It is it, you're very right about that. And want versus need is important, integral, not not just for broader arcs, but uh, in individual episodes as well. This is a great example of that. Um, yeah, because it. I mean, even the stronger episodes will still have this too, right? Where Shinji wanted to prove himself and and really be absorbed with pride in episode 16, but his need mm -hmm. was like humility and to kind of like, um, not do impulsive dumb stuff. So it's, like, <laughs> it's still very much there, uh, in even in other episodes in minor ways, but here it's so well integrated and illustrated. Um, Satsukawa or Ano, whoever really brought that home here. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. this is a very good, episode in terms of structure and writing yeah and yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so that's that's and it's just mo motivation in art is just really important in general mm -hmm. even even if it's not specifically contextualized as want need but it is contextualized as want need here evangelion is all about want need i, I think <laughs> they really someone knew what they were doing in terms of just they, integrating <laughs> want need principles yeah yeah so, well, I, mean, I think it's just it's just a primal it's, it's common it, it's a it's primal a, yeah, it is. It thing. is. It is a framework because how there's not really a better way to write an arc in a lot of ways. You know, there are ways to do arcs and such, yeah. but uh, this is a very just basic and instinctual way to do an arc, whether or not you realize it or not. Yeah. Yep. Character arc. Yeah. For sure. Uh, funny little typo when Shinji's on the platform. Uh, the sign changes from telling telling you what train is coming to head this way emergency passage but they spelt emergency with an a so that's a little funny um emergency emergency yeah yeah <laughs> which is odd their, their english is usually really good they're really good at getting all the english right in this show it's, it can sound a little funny but they're usually it's usually accurate uh but yeah so don't tell anna he, he'll he'll decide to make evangelion special edition <laughs> don't let him know oh no oh no, oh, no. <laughs> they had a muppet dancing scene to episode 19 <laughs> that kendo was watching oh no <laughs> um <laughs> uh, so the oh which angel is this is this the eighth angel the ninth angel it's the ninth angel isn't it Is that is it? Um, Something like that. I don't, Maybe the tenth. I don't want to. I don't want to be. I don't, I'm not sure about that. The pulse is. Okay, well, hold on. We can count them. Adam, Lilith, Sakiel, Shamshell, Ramiel, Gagiel. Did I skip one? Um, I think it's dance like you want to win next. After oh no wait no no it's the uh, no, no no it's it's Definitely the fishing not. one with Oscar you know Oscar strikes yeah Gagiel. and and Gagiel. then it's dance like you want to win. And then, there's and then see, I know their and names. And then the eyeball. Uh, <laughs> no, then it's Mag Magma Diver. Magma Diver. Then eyeball one and then eyeball two. <laughs> eyeball and then acid. Eyeball Lilia. fall. <laughs> and then Lily. You're making me lose count. You're making me lose count <laughs> by saying eyeball so many times. <laughs> it doesn't even matter. I just want to show off that I can name them all. <laughs> I can't name them all. I can't remember. Almost. Okay. But Adam, Lilith, Sakiel, Shamshell, Ramiel, Gagiel, Ersfiel, Magma Diver 1. <laughs> Magma Diver. What's after the. It's the, the Matariel, right? It's the spider one. Spider. Yeah. Virus 1. Leliel. Oh, no. It's like the 13th angel. Never mind. Sorry. I'm totally wrong. <laughs> it's the 13th yeah, angel. Yeah, we've. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're a lot of angels in. I, I was way off. I always forget like the virus, and I forget uh, Bardiel usually because they're not they don't have designs. They're just like they're like my, they're like evil virus. I forgot about the virus um, one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's only represented by the the, the magic going <laughs> over the, like oh no very like, iconic very iconic system. design probably took a lot to conceive that one. Uh, 
There's a bunch of red dots in some water. <laughs> You've done it again. <laughs> it is. Yoshi Shikawa is the character designer. Yoshi, uh, well, the, the monster designs, I'm not sure if they were done by Satomoto, Yoshiyuki Satomoto. Oh, Satomoto. Yoshi Shikawa, right. I'm pretty sure, is Metal Gear. <laughs> Metal Gear. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah. He would he would have designed good Evangelion units. Yeah, it would have been a good job. With with Zone of the Enders. Is, is the dr- Zone right of the Enders look great. You know what? I love the art direction of Zone of the Enders. Probably would have been fine if <laughs> Yoji Shinkawa was doing the art for Ava. <laughs> it would have been great. Anyway, 13th Angel, Zeruel, the arm of God is what his name means, which will be very fit, which is very on point. And he's the angel of strength. Mm. Uh, he's the angel also. According to, I think it was the Ava Geeks, I found this, was the angel who helps David defeat Goliath. It's the angel of mummies. Of what? Of mummies. Why is he the angel of mummies? Because he got... Re- oh, because of the, the paper towel yeah. arms, yeah. Yeah. He's the, <laughs> he's the angel of mummies. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh... Okay. Um... So he's the, he's, he's the, uh, the pebble that, that hit Goliath in the head and killed him, uh... Uh, or <laughs> yeah, he, I... oh yeah. How did he help David? Yeah. I don't know how he helped David. It's just like a rocky situation where he's like, "Okay, kid, you got this. Come on." He's rubbing his shoulders, rubbing David's shoulders. I, no, I like my idea better. I like the I like the idea of him just like he's like, "Okay, just wait one sec," uh, and he just kind of crushes himself into a pebble and then like throws himself into <laughs> David's hand. <laughs> or as he was like flinging the pebble. Just like a, if it was an anime, it's just like the graphic of of um, Zeruel over superimposed over the rock as it flies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I will guide this pebble. Yeah, <laughs> some Bishonen angel. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my favorite angels. I love his stupid face, and I love his paper. I love how arms, much of a threat love... he is because Zeruel is the closest to basically killing them all uh directly yeah um he's he's the most powerful physically too he's the most dangerous overtly dangerous that we've seen up to this point we're escalating uh this one's not as personal as the later ones which try to destroy the heart go after the heart insidious but uh First we attack his heart. Um, but first we attack. His heart. This one isn't. Uh, they aren't trying Willem Dafoe tactics yet. But no, this one, they're not that clever. But this one, they're not as clever as the Green Goblin. Is the uh, this one's the most effective at just going in brute force and going to murder everyone type of deal. Yeah. So. And they showcase that by having him smash through the armored plating above the geo front. He smashes through the entire thing immediately whereas if you looked at matariel he had to like he was like sort of like acid dripping slowly <laughs> he's like hold on i'm gonna get there just gonna drip some acid or ramiel who's using the drill and it took like a day and he was just slowly drilling through one plate after the other or sakiel who was blasting through them one at a time no <laughs> zero just does it immediately he smashes through all 18 plates without even breaking like he just does it immediately and i love the shot, the initial shot of him floating into frame, it's just so cool. It's so Ultraman. It's just so, and the missiles are firing off, and it's just immediately setting up that not, that this this isn't going to be like there's no slow buildup, right? Usually, if an angel shows up, there's like a slow buildup, like oh no, the angel's here. We have to prepare. There's no time to prepare this time. The preparation is not here. No, and there's no time to prepare. And Asuka pretty much cool. tries to challenge this angel, doesn't she? And she completely fails. Uh, yes. When confronting him. Uh, the way that... Um, there's just, you know, there's yeah. no time to prepare. She's not even ready for it, it seems like. So, and... No, she's got, she got all her guns out. She has them all lined up on the, on the beach, but... Yeah, so there's no there's no time to intercept for a surface intercept, which is what they usually do. They have to try and stop him inside the geofront itself. Yeah. Um, and uh, is this wait? When's the scene where? Because I want to talk about that a little bit. Where Shinji's watching. He's he's watching Zero come down. I think. 
uh, I don't know if it's before or after this, but I think it's, it's before this, I think, where he, he's just standing on a hill watching the battle transpire, and you can tell you can tell he's conflicted, which is really cool. I, I love Shinji's character arc in this episode so much, because he's just watching, he's like, I should be there, I should be there, I don't want to be there, I should be there, I should be there. You can see how his mind is working, just because the writing and the direction is so good. He doesn't need to say anything. They don't do that anime thing where there's like an inner monologue, like... I should help Asuka. <laughs> like, there's yeah, nothing it's all like show that. don't tell. It's so well it's done. It's just like let the expression speak for itself, let the framing speak for itself in the cuts. It's great. It's show don't tell. Amazing. Yeah, exactly. Anime doesn't do it nearly uh, enough. Nope, not at all. <laughs> nope, it's it's stylistic. They they are very they like that. But yeah, they like to have inner monologues and explain things. But um, then uh, yeah, then uh, I'm behind on my notes. Sorry. And then uh, Asuka has her battle with Zeruel, where she does not go very well because she's just blasting it with it. Has it ever worked? Just shooting no. it? <laughs> has that ever done anything? Knives seem to be definitely more effective against the angels. You got to get in close quarters, which I think is an intentional, or maybe it isn't intentional, but it's it, it at least is a interesting coincidence because, again, the themes of the show are about... Uh, the connections between people and getting close to others yeah. and breaking down yeah. barriers. Yeah, true. So the AT field. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. like knives are infinitely more effective because it's all close and personal, whereas um, a a you gun isn't. Use knives. A gun keeps things at arm's length. A nuke keeps things. Yeah. A nuke keeps things at arm's length. <laughs> so unless you unless you face nuke somebody. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta get in close. You gotta get in close for that angel action. You gotta get in close. You gotta get intimate. You gotta you gotta open that that AT field with your bare hands. You gotta pry it open and get into someone's. Soul. I wanna I wanna go to That's the message of I wanna movie. go to a Whole Foods and be like, do you have anything that opens up your AT field here? Um, <laughs> <laughs> like a kombucha brand or something. <laughs> Well, yes, sir. We have them right over here. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> it's all tang-flavored kombucha. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> tang flavor. Uh, LCL. <laughs> yes. He's been motivated by doing what he's told. Yeah, yeah sorry. Okay. So I, I think there's another little bit here. I forgot to write down in the notes, but there, I think before this is where they try. Ray tries to pilot Unit 1. And uh, he, she can't. So the other theme of this episode is uh, AV Unit 1's agency. So Shinji is developing his agency. Unit 1 is developing agency. So AV Unit 1 refuses to be piloted by Rei. Um, and the, the dub line here is interesting. I don't know. I always notice how different the Gendo lines are because I remember them really well. So in the original and in the ADV dub, Gendo says something like, oh, this is a rejection of me, of course. Like, he's just like kind of upset about it and he understands the situation and in the new netflix stuff gendo goes refusing me huh <laughs> like, if, like maybe you at one is this impudent kid that's just not doing its homework like ah won't do your homework eh <laughs> it's just a really funny line reading <laughs> uh then uh yeah so that's so that's establishing that then oscar gets her arms chopped off by Zeruel in one attack, and so she tries to charge it with her head. She tries to headbutt it. And in one single strike, it just lops her head off. Um, Masato does a little thing here where she says, like, uh, let's uh, yeah, cut, cut, the, cut, cut her nerves. Make sure she doesn't feel anything. And so her head goes flying through the air. And then one of my favorite scenes. But do you have any thoughts about the Asuka battle? I think it's ironic again that asuka is incapable of really doing anything on her own a lot of the time and this scene compounds it super yeah. hard this is her opportunity to basically solo mission and save the day and she isn't able to accomplish it uh and and it really is continuing to cement her arc further in in episode 22 uh which like kind of completes itself in 22 i mean um yeah. This is going to be a huge moment of shame for her and mm -hmm. uh I it's going to trigger her low point, low point. And I appreciate that this is the, Oh man, there's so many plants in <laughs> that get 
That's sat- a satisfying plant. payoffs so later. Yeah, it's a yeah. You know, you were talking about Unit One's agency, and that's that's that pays off all the way in EOE and stuff. So it's a so, EOE is ultimately like if you look at all the, the the fruit that's born in EOE a lot, like all the seeds were planted by Satsukawa in like Episode Four, Episode Ten, Episode Eleven. Like all of them were Satsukawa plant. It's so weird. Or Ano did it. It's either Satsuka, it's either Satsukawa or Ano who did it, and it's just it's just really. But clever. they get payoffs that are um, really satisfying, you know. And even the rebuilds didn't really do that for a lot of it. It's like, what's the point of Unit One, even? uh resisting or coming alive or going into god mode or anything at the end of the day it doesn't really have a payoff in the final one yeah, yeah. it doesn't really mean anything it's it's just it's just a reflection of what happened in the it, show. it really is it's just like we're gonna do the show without necessarily even having the plants so there are payoffs without plants mm-hmm. and plants without payoffs which is very bizarre but in this series uh it's amazing how everything is so tight and well it's woven in super excellently throughout the whole thing and i don't is there an example of a of a a plant that doesn't really get paid off in the show i don't i don't think there is uh not really i mean if it does it's just it didn't pay off and you don't notice it because so many other things do there are there are examples of the reverse later in eoe with stuff like the um the lance i guess we'll talk about it about that when we get there but the lance the lance is seeded pretty well you see it a couple of times yeah i mean makes it come back the lance is one of those things that's just like it's just the mythology the show's mythology i'm talking about the false lances that the ava series has um just no yeah that even that's sort of it's so minor though those things are kind of cinema sins level of nitpicky uh the major (laughs) thing no explanation for the fake lance of longinus ding like ava (laughs) unit one taking control and having a payoff later where it it basically takes complete control and shinji is powerless to stop what eva unit one is doing that is a major payoff for something that's not like a minor thing or whatever uh and all the all the big yeah. stuff really pays off in the grand scheme of things uh on a macro level eva is just immaculate in that way yeah mm-hmm. um but i yeah i love the scene where oscar loses i think it's cool it's great um <laughs> it's it's I was... It progresses her character in a downward trajectory very effectively. Absolutely. It also sets up... Oh, no, I was going to mention, at one point, I don't know if there still is this narrative, that Asuka's a bad pilot because she never wins alone. None of the pilots win alone <laughs> at any point. I think uh, Shinji only does when the AV unit goes berserk. Otherwise, he never wins a fight solo. He does save her uh... skin a couple times. And he does save her no no yeah they, they always win when they work together Yeah, when they work together yeah that's yeah, what yeah. i was gonna say it's very collaborative when they work together they don't they never win alone really they always have to to team up it's futile to, like, to actually... want to win alone which do you think that's yeah. intentional again because it might be part oh, of the themes as well is like I mean, when you're dealing with the relationships between it, people and individuals men and women it's like together you win uh that kind of it's poetic yeah, poetic in that they, way <laughs> they win when they're cohesive and they all work yeah. together as a team that's when they do well which is very it's very uh east asian mm-hmm. it's a very east asian thing to talk about the collective society working together is when society's at its best i think um, i think there's a lot of individuality in ava uh, more so than most things in that way because it basically argues that you have to come from a place of self-love and self-confidence uh, and and contentness mm-hmm. with the self before you can collaborate or become a collective in that way uh but but being a collective True, being yeah. collaborative is strong and so it's like it's kind of arguing for both it's like your mental health and individuality matters but also working together being a team and and collaborating is is objectively stronger so i have i have thoughts on that i'll get to that when we talk about the end of shinji yeah (laughs) sure sure um yeah so then immediately okay so then we have my favorite scene in the whole episode i think shinji's sitting in the bus depot everything's quiet everything's very calm uh, or the sorry, it's a, it's not bus depot. He's sitting in the shelter, and everything's quiet, everything's calm, and very suddenly, Ava Unit Two's head comes crashing through the ceiling, and everyone's panicking, and Shinji's just staring in horror. And do you know why Shinji is staring? In, besides the obvious fact that it's a, a head, do you know why Shinji is staring at hor- in horror at that head? 
It's because it's Oscar's head. Uh, it's because he thinks Oscar's dead. dead. Yeah. <laughs> he thinks he thinks she's dead. He doesn't think like, oh, she lost a fight. He thinks she's been killed in battle. And what else is he thinking? It's my fault. I wasn't there to help her. Yeah, that's very true. Actually, I never considered it, but that that is definitely yeah. the case. Uh, it's so effective, and it's a great way for him to come back as well. Um, it is. It gives me goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> Legitimately goosebumps thinking about it. Even like when I'm, sometimes I'm at work, I'll think about that, and I'll I'll just get goosebumps again. I'm like, oh, it's so good. Yeah, as opposed <laughs> to like mari comes crashing in and then she, she's like who are you and then she she talks to him and she's like she's like here's a monologue here's a monologue hey shinji everyone's everyone's not doing so hot everyone's counting on yeah. you remember when i smelled you <laughs> oh that's we, who we you have oh such right you're that girl right uh, uh. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll probably end up with you at the end of all this uh <laughs> anyway let's not let's not go there let's, there's a, let's okay a there's a place. there's a lot of comparisons to be made because i feel like the majority of what people loved about 2.0 is just already here in episode 19 uh and it's i think largely and it's it's kind of crazy that people almost misremember or don't even kind of remember or 2.0 sort of superseded at the time uh, this episode for a lot of people they almost forgot just how similar but how much more effective everything is here than in the film uh it's yeah, fantastic they didn't catch I it i think sometimes the rebuild does present things a little more mm-hmm. um simply i think it's easier to understand uh yeah and then yeah and it, they also i don't want to rag on the rebuilds but they also gave kaji's speech here tomorrow which yeah. doesn't make any sense it's just like it's why would you do that <laughs> what is the reason to it doesn't even like, make it doesn't sense make any, it in work. the framework it, of the film itself because you have kaji connecting to shinji two scenes prior and then you need like yeah. a third scene for it to really land the payoff rule of threes you know two uh they say this two is a happy a- or two is an accident three is intentional that's why rule of threes uh, is like a thing it's like if something yeah. appears three times it's it's kind of elegant it's it's a very intentional kind of move but when you reappropriate uh kaji's speech and give it to a character that ultimately has none <laughs> in the broader scheme of things uh it's yeah. she exists as like a meta thing probably because it was just they gave up on trying to write the character but they probably wanted to change it up a little bit too but yeah um yeah but it's it's just it's really effective that we have rapport with kaji and kaji is here and we're coming back again to the watermelon patch we have that beautiful kind of payoff um once mm-hmm. more and and they did do that in 2.0 where she runs through dead watermelon patch but here it's really really nice how um you know kaji is able to connect to shinji and doing it in such a way that he isn't demanding shinji goes back he isn't really requesting it he's just like you know what you need to do you know yeah you've got this yeah. and <laughs> just to kind of take take us through it a bit shinji's staring at the lifeless corpse of the evangelion unit basically he says asuka maybe a little reassured that she's alive <laughs> because obviously the 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 actual core is intact and uh she and just yeah he's just beside himself and he notices kaji and he says kaji what what are you doing here and then shinji or kaji flips it around on him and says like what what are you doing here shinji shouldn't you be helping out basically but you're right and that he's very specifically tells shinji like i'm not forcing you to do anything no one's forcing you to do anything but this is all i can do is water some watermelons this is the only thing i can do you can do a lot more than i can and you have to choose whether or not you want to and i think the watermelons actually symbolically thematically are they're, they're two things one they're things that need to be nurtured so kaji nurtures his watermelons with, with the water he he makes them grow by taking care of them and two it's an example of um i can't remember what my second point was but <laughs> well it directly parallels shinji doesn't it where it's like at this point kaji has sort of been there for shinji a few times now and yeah. it yeah. it come the fruits come to pay off here where Shinji's able to yeah. get enough confidence in himself to do the right thing in this situation. So 
And yeah, and then Kaji just drops some more truth bombs. If the angel succeeds, it's not just a bad thing. It means all life will be over. We're, we'll be done. That's what's at stake here. No one's ever explained that to Shinji. <laughs> explained what's actually at stake. No one's been up front with him or honest with him. And then immediately after this scene, uh, what happens? Um. Well, don't we get an explosion of some kind? Yeah, it's Ray. It's, Ray, Ray comes yeah, out with, with the, the bomb, the N2 mine. The N2 mine. Yeah. Yeah. One armed Ray, uh, and oh, and then we see again the the dummy plug goes into the baby unit, it still won't activate. The agency plotline continues. Then Ray rises up with the bomb. She charges it. She's gonna like stuff that N two mine right in the angel's core, but it has a special ability to protect its core, I guess. <laughs> so it blocks it off when the explosion goes off, and then takes Ray out with one attack. What's really interesting to again, me about this as well is that Ray defied orders to do this. She, like, launched herself, which is really yeah. fun. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm not sure how viable that is, like in the lore of Ava, to launch yourself as an Ava unit. But it's just get in it's, there and be like, oh no. Wait, it, it kind of is. I mean, we see that Shinji does that a similar thing, right? Where he uh he put he kicks like the elevator button, kind of shoots himself up or whatnot. But Ray defied orders to 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 save people at this point, and it's still very self destructive and very like um masochistic in some ways for ray but she was she took matters into her own hands which i think also yeah. furthers her growth furthers her development really shows that mm -hmm. you know she's not she's moving away from being gendo's puppet because gendo clearly didn't want her to do that so that was yeah i don't yeah. I don't know who launched her, actually. You make a good point. Because I think Masato and Gendo are both like, oh, no, Ray, what are you doing? And it's like, wait a minute. Because the thing you're talking about with Shinji, he has to say, Masato, and Masato says, launch the tube. <laughs> they have to, she has to approve it. Right, right, right. Um, um, it, well, basically, okay, so what, what Ray did was she approached um, Maya, and she said, yeah, Maya just really she said, hates Maya, Ray. She's I like, oh, need you, you to, to kill yourself in battle. I need you to launch mm, me. Okay. And Maya's like, what are you going to do in exchange for that, Ray? And then Ray gives her like 10 yen. And then she's like, oh, hell yeah. That's exactly what I needed to, to go to the soda machine and buy myself a <laughs> cup of that coffee or whatever. <laughs> the, the can of coffee. 10 yen is nothing. <laughs> Well, she was. Like she, had, she had uh, nine thousand nine hundred and ninety yen, and needed the ten, the oh, ten okay. extra yen for the for the CCT coffee or CC whatever coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ray did her solid, and and Maya decided to launch this girl up to her death without without permission. So, Ray just for soda, <laughs> yeah, for for carbonated coffee. It's a soda coffee. It's like one of those cokes that tastes like. Because it's... Oh yeah, sorry for Kaji. Right? <laughs> actually, I forgot to mention one thing in the, in the watermelon scene. Kaji, he he says this line where he's like, "Yeah, I, I would rather die, you know, in Masato." In between two pairs uh, of melons breasts. or whatever. <laughs> and the dumb, he says, "I'd rather be between Masato's melons," which I mean, that was a funny way to put that line, but. I'm not sure if I like it better or not. It's kind of cheesy, but it made me laugh. So I guess it worked. It's pretty. But it's also like a really weird place for a it's joke. It's a pretty crass thing to say in general, but <laughs> whatever. It is. Um, it's just Kaji being Kaji, I guess. <laughs> just Kaji being Kaji. Boys will be boys. And then, and then Kaji is like, "You can, Shinji. Only you can pilot Ava. Only I can dive roll off of elevators." Okay, yeah. Only I can dive roll. Did you ever consider doing a dive roll in the Evangelion unit? The angels wouldn't be expecting it. <laughs> Shinji, um, while he's while he's telling Masato to launch him later in the episode, it has like a superimposed image of Kanji dive rolling. He remembers Kanji. He remembers Kanji dive rolling off the elevator, and he's like, "I too can ascend this elevator." <laughs> it completes his arc. It comes full circle. Me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, anyway, that was the last push Shinji needed. Uh, so he runs back. <laughs> and Shinji's going back, and he's not going back because... 
you know, he, he just ran he just ran away from home and he got bored and he wants to come home now. He's doing it because he wants to protect the people he cares about and the people he loves. He's doing it because he cares now. He cares about Masato. He cares about Ray. He cares about Asuka. He wants to help them. He wants to save them. He doesn't want to just not... He doesn't want to just rock... It's not, not that he just doesn't want to rock the boat. He actually wants to do something. He wants to do something productive and proactive. Yeah. He, he has... It's so he cool. has so much. I'm getting he has so much agency here, and he's he's doing something for for others because they need him, and not because of praise, which I think is like a big um, stepping stone for him. I'm piloting yeah. Ava because I need to do th- so to save the people I care about, rather than because I'm looking for dad to tell me that he's proud. Uh, yeah, not not just to have that conversation with dad. Yeah. And not just because I have nothing better to do. Yeah. That's actually part of his character. <laughs> oh, Satakawa, you genius. <laughs> genius. Um, and when he comes in and he's just like, I am the pilot of Ava Unit 1, it's it's like... Yeah, why are you here? They all say that line. That's how they dubbed it every time, is why are you here? And I, I really like McAvery's reading. Why are you here? Just like, it's so... Oh, it's so good. And yeah, then Shinji says, I'm the pilot of Ava Unit 1. Yeah. Uh, and and this is an example to me this is an example of like people talk about toxic masculinity a bit and for some stupid idiotic reason a lot of men think the point of that is to say masculinity is toxic no that's not the point the point is that some masculinity is toxic the toxic part is an adjective describing the masculinity this is an example of constructive masculinity where Shinji doesn't need to be praised he doesn't need to dominate other people he doesn't need to subjugate other people he's doing something to protect what he feels is important yeah he's contributing um and he's coming back to save the people he loved who have made the sa- who have already made sacrifices and already tried to protect other people and failed and he's coming and he's coming back to do his part I'm sorry I really love this episode <laughs> it's very inspirational oh. it's very um it's it's uplifting almost uh especially at this part this is this is the peak uh for me um and it's the rest of the episode is quite horrific in contrast to to this but this is a really triumphant moment and it's it's super good and then i was gonna say something oh and then we see zeruel descending down through uh terminal dogma uh or to terminal dogma and and the music that plays here is so cool. Uh, Shirosaki Su did such a good job with that dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> it's almost like Jaws music as it's descending down because it's just cl- closing in on the the characters we care. The last set of characters we really care about, which are the the people on the bridge: Ritsuko, Masato, Gendo, and uh, and the uh, and just as it it bursts into the the safe place, the terminal dogma where. Uh, everyone is and everything is and uh, it, it crawls through the wall and breaks through the wall and it's really about to murder Masato and just as it does Shinji comes through the wall and punches it in the face <laughs> so after he watched Rei sacrifice herself and Asuka sacrifice herself he comes to save Masato and that's that's kind of a triptych in the show thematically those three characters mm-hmm. he comes to save Masato before she can sacrifice herself to save the people there so he he helps her so flipping then, cool. Yeah. So flipping <laughs> and then cool. and then so Gendo cool. has like um I'm pretty sure if I'm not mistaken yeah, this is the bit with the blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happens is Zeruel shoots a laser beam and basically lobs off Shinji's arm. Uh and yeah. the blood just splatters Gendo, which is another iconic shot. Uh I think it's and he he yeah, he's react. yeah, he doesn't react at all. He's just like okay. <laughs> he's just like he's like soka soka <laughs> soka what i want a dry cleaner desu <laughs> <laughs> um and uh and this fight is brutal this fight is so cool this is like like uh, they're just having a brawl inside the, the actual terminal and then Shinji shoves it up against the elevator and says, Masato! And she goes, launch! And they launch! That was such a cool fight. <laughs> they, they shoot up into the air. Shinji comes crashing down um, and it's basically starts wailing on this angel and ripping off its face. It's so, yeah, it is so grisly. It's brutal. <laughs> grisly. Um, and then... Power down. Boo! 
He runs out of battery. Yep. And now he's at the mercy of the angel, which which apparently usually they're just like beelining for the for Adam or Lilith, and but this time it takes the time to just go like I'm gonna beat you up, pew, 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 and starts hitting him with the the, the arms, the like yeah. two arms, just over and over again, and starts tearing apart its armor plating. Like it's mad. I guess the angel's angry at it. He's trying to shatter the core. I'm gonna show you what I did to Goliath. The, the angel's trying to shatter <laughs> Shinji's core, and Shinji's in a real moment of peril uh, here. Um, yep. And he's fighting. He's like, yeah, yeah, come on, come on, come on, come come to life. Come move, to life. Move, yeah, move. yeah, yeah. Or in French, boosh, boosh, boosh. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then we get that one shot of the water drop um, if I'm not mistaken, and y- it's yeah, it's Yui the, the Yui's Yui, soul, the Yui ripple, yeah Yui's yeah. Yui's water drop ripple, um, and Yui comes in, uh, and Mama comes and helps save the day. Uh, <laughs> yep, and goes berserk, and then we get that awesome animated sequence, amazing animated sequence by the EOE Basically dude the... again. Um, his name escapes me yeah. right now, but he's the uh, he's the director of Deno Coil, and. Uh, he did the Oscar fight. Yeah, he EOE did the Oscar fight about. from EOE, uh, and he animates the Ava in a way that I'm pretty sure it wasn't rotoscoped, but it feels like the same energy as rotoscoping, it where it's it's so humanistic and and organic and and heavy. It's like a person, um, and it's. It, 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 Ava Unit 1 just goes in and starts devouring the angel uh, and absorbing what is called an S2 engine, which means that Ava Unit 1 has no longer, uh, it has no need for power unit anymore because uh, it is, is essentially mm-hmm. absorbed the angel's um, core. And so it itself can operate like an angel just without a, a battery unit of any kind. So yeah. Which the battery unit is probably a control apparatus anyway. Uh-huh. That's probably just they probably didn't. It give them... it essentially can override the control. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, like I think that's why they gave it to them so it could run out of power mm-hmm. and then collapse if it went berserk. Um, now they don't have that. And Sele isn't going to like this. Um, no, Sele not going to like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah Ritzko has they we, they follow up the Ritzko thing from like a couple of episodes ago where Ritzko ex- explains that like yeah. The angel, the Avas aren't robots. They're actually clones of angels that we made, <laughs> and so that follows up on that. Um, which episode was that? Where I can't remember. Was it? Was it Lilliputian Hitcher? Where she's talking to Gendo and says they'll never forgive us if they find out the truth. I can't remember which episode. She does say that, but yeah, um, she says that at some point. Yeah, so that's I think a it's follow- episode sixteen, follow- right? Actually, oh, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's the episode it's sixteen. Where wa- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're washing the Ava. Excuse, yeah. excuse me. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, I this is this too. is a payoff in a way to a question that has been so in television shows, right? You want to set up like a series <laughs> of questions. This is a good way to think about things in TV writing, um, and those questions begin slowly being answered. And one of the questions is like, "What is the Ava unit?" That's like a central question of the show. Um, and so we're getting that paid off here and we're going to get even more elaboration later um, as to what exactly it is. But that's one of the core mysteries. Uh, you know, the, the several other questions is like, what is Gendo up to? Like, what is um, um, what is Shinji? How is Shinji going to uh, be an Ava pilot when he's so much of a <clears throat> uh, coward? <laughs> He's not. Yeah. A, he's not equipped to be an AI yeah. pilot. And uh, th- those are kind of central questions, and it's really good to when you're writing for something as long-standing as a TV show to just have like a series of, of questions that the audience is going to ask themselves over the course of, um, so you can pinpoint, you know, and create intrigue and start to uh, pile on those answers over time. Uh, and this is a great payoff for something that has been a question since episode uh, one and two, really so yeah exactly <clears throat> uh i was gonna say like the atmosphere here the color palette with what you were talking about with the unit where it's almost like hunched over like a neanderthal or something primal that's just something primal animalistic <laughs> it's really cool yeah 
and uh, uh and then we so yeah this is also the ava ava unit one's agency is finally realized she takes action on her own mm-hmm. um while shinji is also trying to take action on his own and yeah so that that all comes together everything all the themes come together um yeah any so that's yeah, Celia's not going to like this. That's the end of the episode. Um, so any <laughs> thoughts blah, blah, blah. on this episode? Gendo's plan. Oh, yeah. Blah, 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 plot lore. I wrote down a note that says, blah, 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 plot lore. Gendo Akari scheme. <laughs> um, there, I really love this episode. It's still one of my favorites. Might be one of my favorite TV series episodes in, like, anything. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I've watched a lot of TV shows, live action, animated Game of Thrones got nothing on episode 19. Uh, whatever. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's a, it's an episode full of action. It sets up tragic character arcs to come. Uh, it, it's yeah. a triumphant. It's got something for everyone. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it's horrific. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's uplifting. It's horrific. It's, uh, tense, thrilling, crazy good crazy good now we're gonna have game of thrones fans rebuild fans and worst of all kensuke fans sending us hate mail it's come at terrible. me i'll be ready i'll be I'll ready, be ready. <laughs> we didn't say anything that controversial. no 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 <laughs> uh the last episode of game of thrones was not written very well oh <laughs> oh no <laughs> i uh don't think that game of thrones is a bad show just for the record but yeah it it definitely <laughs> it started to run out of um material it doesn't have ava and units. it definitely did not have ava units um and Tyrion lannister did not sit in a chair with a spotlight so i think that objectively no. makes it worse. Never put his hands in front of his face either. Yeah. Like what? What kind of? What kind of? How do we know he's intelligent if he doesn't tent his fingers in front of his? Okay. Face okay. So glasses? real talk. Jon Snow is probably Shinji, but Tyrion might be Gendo. There you go. Yeah. Well, no, no. I'm just saying Tyrion is smart like Gendo, and we know Gendo's smart because he wears glasses and tents his fingers in front of his face. There are visual cues. They never do that with Tyrion. Right. Like zero out of ten. Exactly. Would not Game of Thrones again. Um. <laughs> no. <laughs> thank you everyone for listening to our podcast uh this has been good i had my Jesus. points <laughs> i am i know this is long i'm sorry i just wanted to like, quickly highlight with the, the dub go for it <laughs> oh oh sorry i thought you were ending the podcast <laughs> we have gone on for an hour and 10 minutes so, wrap up your okay. points wrap up your points so I have one more point to make. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I really like some of the acting in this episode. I love Ken- Ketono Mitsubishi, who's the Japanese Masato. I love Suulu, who's the English Ritsuko in the original ADV dub. Uh, I love Tristan Kavery, who played English Gendo, ADV dub. Megumi Ogata, obviously. Uh, Casey Mongio uh, was really good. Um, Yuriko Yamaguchi, who plays Ritsuko. I just love the softness. I love the, the undercurrent of her voice. Uh, Allison Keith plays Masato in English. Really great, really great, really great, really great. Uh, I do think it's interesting that the French actors, really good dub, they can't yell, because I, I think culturally it's seen as very passe to yell, like, you, they just don't yell, and it, this is a consistent thing that French people don't yell very well in, in English dubs, or in English dubs, in dubs, I'm trying to say this really fast, sorry, and so yeah, so all the yelling is just very calm. Anyway, yeah, that's my point, thanks for listening to our podcast, if you liked it, subscribe to us on Patreon, patreon.com slash grandrose, G-R-A-N-D-R-O-S-E. Uh, I really love talking about this episode. It's my favorite episode of anything ever either. Obviously, you can tell I'm very excited. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Bye.